So in this short video, I want to talk about coding the surface meaning versus coding uh, the implicit meaning. Uh, what I mean by this is that you can either uh, code when you analyze your data, you can either code directly, uh, have your codes based on, uh, on the views and beliefs and attitudes that your participants are expressing, or you can also code uh, based on what you think they are expressing or what you th what you make of what they are saying and what they are doing. Of course, you can have a combination of both. You don't necessarily have to have this uh, implicit meaning approach in your analysis, but I would say that you definitely have to have this surface meaning coding approach in your analysis because after all, that's, uh, that's the main purpose, the main value of qualitative research, uh, to ask people about their opinions. And I don't even think it would be very fair to uh, towards our participants if we recruited them and asked them questions and then only paid attention to what we think <laughs> what they are saying is representing. So I would say this is uh, this surface meaning or at least that's uh, how I call it. Uh, coding is definitely uh, the predominant uh, approach and there should be uh, it should be in ma majority in your uh, analysis but sometimes there may be situations when you really feel like maybe there is something more to it. So this is what I want to uh, talk about in this video. This is part two of a series of videos about the basics of coding. Uh, you can find the link uh, to part one of this series here. In part one, I talked about uh, using uh, two or more codes to code one extract. So if you haven't seen that video, you can uh, watch it after this one. But let's go back to our surface versus implicit meaning coding. So. Uh, for the purpose of this video, uh, to give you an example, let's imagine that we are doing a study of bullying. So we're uh, we're talking to bullies. I'm really not sure how this would stand as a study in the real world. It would be quite problematic to find people who are identified as bullies or self-identify as bullies. But let's imagine we have access to this kind of data. So we're doing a study of bullies. We're talking to bullies and we want to... Uh, understand their actions and how to help them. So we want to specifically understand the reasons why they did what they did. Uh, we want to understand uh, possible ways to help them, maybe to prevent that uh, from happening in the future. And we want to understand uh, certain barriers to, to helping them, why, why it may be challenging to help them. So for this reason, we are talking to them and imagine that one of our uh, questions during the interview is, uh, why did you do it? Why did you bully or why did you bully the other person or why did you do what, what you did? And, uh, and now imagine uh, the following responses. So we have, let's say, three responses to this question. Uh, I'm just going to read them. Uh, so the first, uh, the first bully says, I didn't know this would hurt him. I didn't know this would hurt, hurt my victim. Imagine that uh, you just know that it, it can't be true. So imagine they set their victim on fire or, or whatever, just did something that, uh, that really hurt their, uh, their, uh, the, the other person, their victim, and you just know it can't be right that they really didn't know, you know they were hurting them. The second person says, uh, I wasn't myself that day. And the third person says, it's not my fault, uh, he made me angry, so it's not my fault. So again, the first person says, I didn't know it would hurt him. The second person says, he wasn't himself. The third person says, uh, it's not my fault, he made me angry. So so now uh, comes our our example of uh, two different approaches to, uh, to coding. Of course you can, uh, since you asked the question about the reasons why, why this happened, uh, the first thought would be to code it as reasons why why this happened so code the response as reasons why uh, they did what they did uh, so in that case it would be something like you know lack of awareness of the consequences or lack of awareness that it may cause harm uh, you can think of you know not being yourself on that day uh, this kind of reasons based on what what they just told us on the other hand as i said you're probably thinking you know how is it possible that he didn't know he's going to hurt him Again, of course, uh, this is just an example, and you know we could possibly think of ways, of situations when this person really didn't know. Maybe you know it's a young person, maybe he has some mental health issues. But let's imagine that this, you know, neither of uh, none of this is 
the case. So the first thought is, of course, he knew he would hurt him. The second one, you know, that says he wasn't himself, again, doesn't really sound convincing, you know, as a reason why you would bully somebody. So in this case, rather than coding this as reasons, you know, for bullying and, and thinking of all these reasons, and as I said, um, creating our codes based on, on these reasons, uh, I would be tempted to code it as uh, something completely different. I would be tempted, remember we're uh, thinking about ways to help them and also uh, challenges and barriers to helping them. So in this case, uh, to me, these all these three extracts, what they, what they demonstrate, what they show me, is avoiding responsibility. So, so of course, uh, so this is the main point, you know, of, uh, that I'm trying to make in this video. Uh, they never told me I'm avoiding responsibility. And this is, you know, the first thing when you think about coding and, you know, analyzing interview data, you're thinking, I will listen to what people tell me and I will code it. Uh, and the codes will, of course, of course, represent, you know, what, what they told me, their views. But in this situation, as I said, this clearly is not the case because to me it's just a, a perfect example example of avoiding responsibility. They are coming up with all kinds of excuses when asked why did you do it. So rather than trying to force you know the codes into this category, even though I don't really believe you know that to be the case. So uh, rather than uh, trying to create these codes as as I said, lack of awareness or you know of harm or that you're causing or the consequences or whatever, to me I would probably choose to code them as a completely different category. So maybe barriers to helping you know these bullies, and this would be an example of avoiding responsibility. If they avoid responsibility, they don't want to take responsibility for their actions. That's obviously a big barrier to. To, you know to helping them so using uh, the last uh, the, the third extract that I mentioned so again I'm going to read this it's not my fault he made me angry imagine uh, this response and then also another person says is because of the way he acted uh, so the victim acted and another bully says uh, he shouldn't have laughed so loud you know so I beat him up or whatever so he laughed too loud it's his fault so again uh, uh, this is another example of uh, you know where I'm not uh, entirely convinced that this is a good reason uh, to cause harm to somebody to bully somebody. Uh, so in this case, it's uh, again I could probably either code it as a as this general um, general code avoiding responsibility because they are still doing this, or maybe you know I could uh, create another code uh, called blaming the victim or or something like that because that's again all these three extracts show me that they are uh, trying to blame the victim for their actions so as i said again this is because qualitative uh, data analysis is so flexible of course you can uh, you can even use both of these codes as i explained in the in the first video in this series uh, so you can initially have mm, these codes blaming the victim and avoiding responsibility and later you'll see what happens if you want to have uh, one general code uh, re avoiding responsibility as a challenge to helping the bullies uh, you can have it maybe you decide to break it down into several uh, ways and uh, several ways in which avoiding responsibility manifests itself so one of them would be blaming the victim so uh, this uh, will really depend on what you decide to do with your data but I hope that the point that I'm trying to make is quite clear to you so rather than Lit uh, coding literally for what the participant said, you are using your judgment and your analytic thinking and your interpretation to code for what you think these extracts represent. Of course, you have to be careful with this because uh, you can't just keep doing that and you can't just keep interpreting uh, and coding for what you think they meant. Uh, but I would say, I mean, but it's still uh, a common practice, and I would say that if you are quite conscious of, of this and you're still controlling your own assumptions because that's a very risky situation if you're just imposing your views and assumptions on the data. Uh, in that case, it would be okay. And when you present the findings later, you do need to make this clear as well. So you do need to explain that apart from coding directly what they said, the views they're expressed, you are also coding uh, this other this other aspect of what they said so we were also using your judgment and some codes were based on on what their 
uh, views represented rather than what they directly told you. So this is it on this topic. I hope that I made it a little bit clearer to you because I know that many of you asked me whether whether it's uh, a common practice, whether it's even allowed to, to have this kind of coding. Uh, if you still have any more questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. And also if you feel like you require a more guided assistance, uh, feel free to explore the different options for personal tutoring on my website.